Hey everyone, sorry I'm using my cell phone to do these videos. It's not the greatest quality, but it definitely can reach out and answer some people's questions. Um, in my previous videos, I've had people ask me like, why did I go from a Holly High Ram air intake to a LSXR Fast 102 millimeter air intake? And the answer is actually quite simple. Being that a Holly High Ram is extremely high and it's extremely big, it's better suited for cars that have boost, such as a turbo or a twin turbo or something you know, similar to that aspect or maybe a sequential supercharger or whatever the hell that thing's called. Um, so with that actually a natural aspirated engine, when we had the Holly High Ram intake, we lost 10 horsepower and 50 pounds of torque, which was not really what I was aiming for, obviously. So actually today I just want to kind of make a little video on what are the benefits of the LSXR intake and what advantages does it have over the Holly High Ram. So there's actually a few advantages and disadvantages and I'm going to start with the negative and kind of end on a positive note. So the very first thing that you'll notice is that there's kind of a lot going on here. Um, so there's a lot of extensions that you would have to do. There's a lot of things that need to be relocated. Uh, in the videos of installment, it says like, oh yeah, it's very easy to put this. We give you extensions, we give you this. And that's really not the case. So um, real quick, the way that we have this set up is that our EVAP system, we extended to go over to this port that comes out of, um, of the intake. Next, we have our MAP sensor relocation, which we redid the wiring because the extender or the wire extension that was there wasn't the right extension and it wasn't able to reach um, this particular location. So we had to extend the map sensor. The next thing is, if you've noticed, we have a BBK 102 millimeter throttle body due to the fact that we have a 102 millimeter um, LSXR intake manifold. This sticks out a little bit further than the stock manifold and can be extremely close to this tensioner pulley right here with your throttle body. Now, you can see that there's maybe just a millimeter or two of space in between the throttle body's uh, electric actuator and this pulley. Now, I'm not really sure if this can be designed to flip over. And, uh, you know, you can have the electric actuator more towards the power steering fluid reservoir. I'm not sure. I didn't really try that. That might be an option, but I kind of just wanted BBK to kind of stand up the right way. And uh, that's what we got. So that's a negative. Um, it just rides pretty close. I haven't had any contact. Um, so this is actually staying pretty fresh. These dents were from something else. I'm not really sure. Um, so that millimeter or two right there is not, hasn't been an issue. And we've been kind of monitoring that and checking it out. Also, this intake manifold has some random ports that need to be plugged up because it is suitable for all LS style engines, which might be different generation or might have different connections that you need to put for whatever you're putting. So that's really the only disadvantage that I've seen other than it's kind of just riding close with that particular uh, throttle body. Um, mind my makeshift air intake right now. We're just, we broke our AME one and we just had to kind of whip up a replacement right now. Um, so the advantages of it are, is that it's actually, you could do a lot with this particular intake manifold, and by that I mean you can actually open this up and put other style running boards inside. So you can have them really short, medium length, or super long, depending on what torque curve you kind of want for low, medium, or high RPMs. With that, I think it's pretty cool. The fuel rails, on the other hand, are not bad. They, uh, they fit in pretty good. It's a little dusty. Um, but they lock in place pretty easily. The installation of this is actually extremely easy. I did have to custom make a fuel line right here that goes in to the rails right here. So this is a custom fuel line that was made uh, for this purpose off of this fuel line that goes to the gas tank. Um, in the back, you also had to make a custom connecting fuel line that joins the fuel rails because the one that you have or the one they give you is just kind of a piece of crap. So with this, we actually gained around, I think around 15, 15 horsepower with, with how we have it set up inside, which we just have the long running rails. And uh, I honestly, I can't complain about it. It's held on pretty well. I like the quality of it. It's pretty good, but it's about 1200 bucks. So it's a little pricey with money, but I would prefer this if you have a naturally aspirated engine, well over a Holly High Ram because the High Ram is just too big. 
it's too big um we had to cut out the back firewall to sit there and get it to fit in it was a mess it wasn't worth it um the hood didn't close all the way we had to make modifications it's in it's in all my previous videos so if you want to go back and check those out real quick you can see the comparison but there's a lot of positive stuff that comes off of this you just need to kind of invest a little bit more into the proper hardware to sit there and make it um to make it acceptable on your engine so you don't have any issues with like the map and fuel lines and just other stuff in general so this particular setup i like it a lot um and you can do a lot to it except obviously supercharger because i would have to come off um but i hope this makes it a little bit easier uh if anyone's kind of curious this particular car we're running about 530 horsepower to the wheel it has a stage cam or a stage two camshaft in it from gpi um, and, and it actually is awesome and super fun to drive. So this is uh, this is all doing extremely well right now as a setup. We just need to get a new air intake and go from there. And that's about it. So if you guys have questions about this or if there's something I did not cover in the uh, LSXR intake. And this is about having it on the car for about a year. Um, so we've had it for about a year and we put about roughly maybe 10,000 miles on it with this particular setup. So if there's any questions you guys have about what you see here, what the setup is, or questions about what parts you see or where you got them from, just let me know. Uh, if you have installment questions, let me know. It's extremely easy to do. You just got to make sure you take the time to do it right. So I hope this helps. Like I said, mind my makeshift air intake. It's kind of just sitting there to make the car drivable until the new one comes in. But, uh... It's a good setup and I highly recommend it.